FL Studio 2024 is packed with a bunch of new features. Whether you're a brand new producer or you've been making music for a bunch of years like myself, these features and new plugins are going to be essential for your workflow. Stick around because I'm going to be going through the top features and we're going to go through all the best ones that you will most likely use on a day-to-day -day basis. By the end of this video, you'll be fully equipped knowing all the new features without having to, you know, research all these things and find them by yourself and watch through hours of videos. No one wants to do that. Let's get you set up and ready with what's new in FL Studio 2024. Let's go. All right, so we're in FL Studio. Let's start going over these things right now, man. Let's get right into it. So starting out, we've got the sounds, kind of the FL Studio cloud. What I like to call this is basically like FL Studio's version of Splice. There's a lot of really key differences though that make this like a million times better than Splice. First of all, one of the, the the key things that are really, really cool about this is that it's completely integrated into FL Studio. So there's no like third party window that you have to have open or you have to like split your screens or anything like that. I found that super annoying and it was one of the reasons why I didn't use Splice as much as I did, I feel like, is because I never wanted to have like that third window open and also it's like a third party app that's like taking up your memory along with FL Studio. With it being integrated like this, you can actually just drag and drop samples right in which is like huge and you can just play it and it's super simple you drag it in it's there within seconds and you don't have to like open up all these windows drag and drop them in there you know mess around with your file folders and all that kind of stuff so that right there is a huge thing for me personally so if you open up this folder right here called sounds everything that you've dragged and dropped into fl studio or you have uh, saved obviously is going to show up right here in sounds so this is a really simple way for you you to like go about and like find it and I believe it just saves it as what the pack was called so like it'll start saving it under packs and everything So that right there is huge. And again, the integration is just so blessed. I love it. Along with that, you can actually get VSTs from this as well too. In order to do that, you have to have a subscription to FL Cloud. So the plus gets you, or 18 plugins, and then the pro gets you 65 plus. You can do a trial right off the bat so you can actually like test things out. I haven't really gone about and downloaded any of the VSTs yet. I haven't really had a chance to. However, from what I've heard, there's a lot of really, really good VSTs and I will be doing an in-depth tutorial on some of those VSTs as well too later on down the road so definitely stay tuned for that just this alone and there being 65 vsts and plugins right off the bat for pro knowing that like this is just the starting point is huge and i think this just absolutely blows every other kind of service like this out of the water i mean for me personally even if they didn't have any of the vsts and i was still using splice and this came out just for the sounds and everything i would have deleted my splice subscription right then and there and i would have just gotten this instead. So that pretty much covers the cloud part of this update. Like I said, this is huge. I'm so, so in love with this whole thing and how it's integrated and everything. I just think it was so smart on their end and I'm surprised it took them this long to do it, honestly. But again, this is huge. Like I said, you get a free trial, so go check it out. Go kind of play around with it. See if it's worth it for you. Get the pro trial, try out some of the VSTs, some of the plugins, and um, yeah, just give it a whirl. So along with this, like I said, there's new VSTs and plugins. One of the VSTs that you get that comes loaded into FL Studio, but again, you have to have the actual pro version to be able to use this, is Kepler XO. So this is an upgrade from the previous Kepler with more features, uh, more capabilities. This is a synthesizer. I will be going more in depth with a video on all of these VSTs later on down the road. 
obviously I'll just do a quick overview of what you get. You get Kepler XO, you get a new spreader, and then you also get a new low filter for doing some really cool uh, filters and all that kind of stuff on your tracks. Like I said, I'm just going over these super quick so that you know that they're there. I will do a full review on these later on down the road. So if you want to see that, definitely leave a like and leave a comment, like I said, but moving on. So one last thing on cloud, actually, before we move on. So you can actually mix your beat, song, whatever musical creation that you make right inside of FL Studio with the cloud. Let me show you. So if you go to file, export, you go to master, you'll get this little pop up here, okay? And there's a ton of options here. So if you go to export type, you're gonna have a bunch of options here. So this is kind of like what you would usually see, your format, you get a couple different options here. So you get 16, 24, 32, stereo, mono, 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 obviously. And then if you go to quality, you have a bunch of different options here now. So you got low quality, average quality, high quality, all the way up to uh, 512 point. Uh, you also get HQ for all plugins, dithering, extra data. You can add a couple information here. And then at the very bottom here, this is kind of the cool thing is you got a loudness thing here, right? And then you also have this custom kind of template here for certain streaming services, yada, yada. All these different options for loudness. This is actually gonna change up the mix of the project based on the reference that you give it. So for example, if we went to hip hop, it would be different if we went to rock and pop. It would be different if we went to tech house. I'm not gonna run through all of them and show you like different mixes, but you can go ahead and mix your beats or your projects with these, play around with it and see what works best for you. From what I've heard, these work pretty well. So definitely go test it out for yourself and see what works for you. And also you just have so many more options here. So definitely worth something to check out right here. So another really cool feature that has been added to Edison is the vocal separator. So what you can actually do is if you pull up Edison and you were to bring up uh, a song or maybe you recorded vocals or something, but there was a lot of background noise, what you can actually do is you can go here and you can go to vocal denoise isolator. Let me just download it real quick. All right, so if you go here, vocal denoise isolator. So once it's done analyzing, you'll get this knob right here. And basically what you can do is you can change this knob and it's going to change what you actually get from the song. So if I play it here. So now it's completely taking everything else out. Whereas if I go this way. It's gotten rid of those vocal chops. And if I go back here. We're back to the vocal chops. And I go back. It's back to the beat. So it's pretty cool in that sense. Um, and it actually works pretty damn well, not gonna lie. So if this is something that you've been using like a third party software for, this is definitely something that you should be using. It's built right into FL Studio. There's no reason to use like third party software for this kind of stuff anymore. So a couple of really solid tips within the playlist that are new is if you have a sample or, you know, a pattern or something and you click control V, hold those together and then drag the sample, it will instantly create a unique sample every single time instead of having to right click here and click create new so this just makes your workflow like a lot easier and honestly is just like super helpful overall if you've ever accidentally nudged your playlist without knowing it's probably because you were scrolling through your playlist with your mouse this has happened to all of us when you go to listen back to the final project and it just sounds off by you know just that little bit of margin what this probably is like I said is from you scrolling through the playlist like this so how you can actually disable this is if you go here go to edit and then turn nudge clips with mouse wheel off just like that and that'll actually disable it so it won't happen again this was huge and I'm so grateful that they made this an option another really cool quality of life thing that they did as well is instead of highlighting all of the pieces up here at the top now it just does a little border around them so you actually know which tool
tool you're using. I know there's been a couple times where I'm like, am I using a pencil tool or do I have the paint tool? I'm not sure. This kind of alleviates that. So the one that you're using is obviously going to be fully highlighted. And then everything that you're going over is just going to have the little highlighter over top of it. So now there's actually this really cool way of creating stutters and repeats for drums, melodies, and all that kind of stuff. And it's really, really easy. So if you go down here to control where you would usually do your panning, velocity, all that kind of stuff, there's actually this new one called note repeat. So if I was to lay down a pattern right here, and let's say I wanted this clap pattern to stutter a couple times. As you can see, as I pull this bar up and down, you can see that it's chopping it up as I pull it up and down. So let's just put it right there and let's see what that sounds like right so you can see boom 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 so it chopped it four times and i think if we look right here one two three four so based on the lines that you go up on these squares it's actually going to be how many times it's going to chop it so now this should be one two three four five so that's a really easy way to create rolls. I guess it would kind of make them a little more simplistic and you wouldn't really be able to space them out like you would obviously with doing classic rolls and all that kind of stuff. However, it is an easy way to go about doing it, you know, without having to chop it up if you're just doing like simple rolls and all that kind of stuff. But another really cool feature that I think is gonna save all of us a lot of time, especially if you're someone who samples a lot or uses loops quite often, is this little piece right here. First of all, you get the wave format, which is not new, but if it's named correctly, and by the way, it has to be named correctly or else it won't show up like this. So from my understanding, it has to have the BPM number, then BPM after it. I believe it has to be using these underscores in the name for it to actually be able to, you know, come up with these things. I've made loops and I tried to go through mine and it was really popping up. So I had to use a loop from sounds. If you come here, you can actually see we can change a couple things here so we can change the key so let's say you have a drum pattern already laid down so what you can actually do is um, okay so my my 808 pattern is actually C so this loop is a C sharp so obviously that's not gonna work so just to make a quick example of this so obviously C is the correct note if you were to go to F changes the note and it does it right there so when you drag it in right here it will actually be it will be the same key that it was from where you pulled it out of the browser so that's a really cool feature and honestly super goaded i think it's gonna save a ton of time instead of having to come in here you know play around with the pitch until you get it right i think that's gonna save a ton of samplers and loop users a lot a lot of time and i'm really looking forward to that all right so next up we have the chord progression tool this is kind of been like the big controversial thing that FL Studio came out with. So let me show you how it works. I don't know how much this will get used. I feel like it's a good thing for new people and new producers to start out with, but I don't know how much use it really has, but I haven't played around with it enough maybe to really know its full potential, but I can show you what you can do with it as of right now. If you open it up, you get this here. Basically right here is what your chords look like right now. And behind it is exactly what is shown here. So basically what you can do is you can play around with this knob here. So in the middle, you're gonna get a good mix between conventional and adventurous. Obviously the more conventional you go, the more generic it's gonna sound. And then the more adventurous you go, the more kind of jazzy and out there progression you're gonna get. So here, let me show you. So we'll start with conventional. So like the most basic chord progression you've ever heard in your entire life. And then if we go to adventurous. Pretty good, right? It sounds a lot better, it's more unique, and it's not just like whatever chord progression that you've just heard a bazillion times. Don't get me wrong, this is nothing like completely out of the ordinary, but it's something at least not so generic. With that, you can actually go ahead and do a little more tweaking. So if you go here to the toolbar, you can actually go here and you can take out bass notes. 
you can also click on the main and get rid of those so if you wanted just the main notes or if you wanted just the bass notes you can go ahead and change those right there so along with that as well too you can actually go here and if you right click on this right here and you go to edit you can change the key and you can also change the scale that you are making these chord progressions in let's say i wanted to do a major and let's say i wanted to do a c sharp major so now when i play this let's regenerate it you can tell that that is more in a major scale let's say that you don't like one of these chord progressions let's say you like this one this one and this one but this one just eh, you don't really like it so what you can do is you can click right here and you can actually select an alternative chord that you want to put there so let's put this B sharp minor right here instead <laughs> That sounds better to me. Maybe I want to change this one. Let's do B sharp minor at nine. Cool, that sounds good. This gives it a little more emotion in my opinion. That's a really, really easy way to just kind of manipulate the chords and make them sound a little more unique to you. And then on top of that, you can actually change the size of the chords so that it's not just per bar. Let's just see what it sounds like. See, and now that doesn't sound too bad, you know what I mean? Like, and let's just hear what it sounds like here. Let's see if it loops well. That doesn't sound too bad. Oh yeah, and I guess this is probably the same as the chord stamper. If you do Alt G, makes it so you can move the notes around. Okay, good to know. Before you can actually play around with all, the, all these notes, after you export it from the chord creator, you wanna do Alt G, and then that'll actually make it so that you can play around with the notes yourself. Those are kind of the biggest parts of the chord generator, aside from, you know, something like this, where you can do randomizes it, uh, and then you can kind of shuffle this. Oh my God, let's just see what this sounds like. curious. I just kind of want to play around with this for here. Try bold. these tabs here so there's a couple other tabs isolate one oh okay so we can actually go a little deeper here we can actually create counter melodies here so let's see what this sounds like okay so let's reset this quickly I'm having a unison MIDI chord pack feeling right now. It's so inspiring. So let's go here and let's do rhythm. Okay, okay, so this is... Okay, so this is interesting. So we can actually... Okay, okay. So we have a couple options here to make the counter melodies. So we have arp, chop, and harmonize, and then obviously you can actually just play around with it and kind of make what you want here with all of these knobs and whatnot. But this arp right here. If 
you want me to go through the whole chord generator in another video, let me know. I'll go through the entire thing. We'll build a beat from it and then we can go from there. I'm really interested to kind of dive deeper into it and kind of play around with it. So if you want to see another video for that, let me know. I'll probably end up making it anyways because I, I kind of just want to do it. But if you're interested in that, make sure you leave a like, leave a little comment down below as well too. Let me know what you guys thought of all these new features for FL Studio. I really think that there's a lot of really, really cool things. My personal favorite is the new chord progression generator. I just think that's really, really cool. And I also really, really like the cloud system that they're setting up. I think they are, you know, setting up something really, really big and something that can be huge for the producer community later on down the road. So let me know what you guys thought about these new features and let me know what your favorite new feature is on FL Studio 2024. And if you enjoyed this, make sure you hit the sub, make sure you like. I'm going to be posting a bunch more content on the new FL Studio update. If you want to keep up to date with that and also with new updates in the future, betas and all that kind of stuff, make sure you hit the sub down below. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Peace out.